Mr. Mark, very much indeed, and good morning. I, uh, I just glanced at the, uh, the documents you've got on your seat, and one of them is entitled FDA Portfolio of Assets, and I'm quite troubled by the fact that I'm not one of them. <laughs> so uh, we'll talk about that later. Um, Mark Neil Watson, I put quite a lot of work into this, at what's become sort of annual speech each year. And what is remarkable, and obviously I was doing a lot of it as I was travelling, what's really remarkable is how much of what uh, I'll be saying this morning would not, uh, not that I wouldn't have been saying it ten years ago, I wouldn't even think about saying some of this stuff ten years ago because most of it didn't exist or existed in such embryonic form it wouldn't have made a lot of sense. So I'd, I've been uh, reminded of how rapidly this industry is moving and changing and having to adapt and adjust. And it's a, it is a quite extraordinary phenomenon, if you allow yourself time to step back and look. It's, it is a great pleasure to welcome you to what's become a kind of State of the Union forum for the UK film business. It's an, an annual opportunity to reflect on the marketplace, to advance an agenda in my role as president of FDA, and to outline what I see as some of the priorities for the year ahead. In the next 20 minutes or so, I'll hope to do all those things before handing over to Ed Vasey, our Creative Industries Minister. As you know, Ed's held this post for, throughout the whole of the coalition government, having previously served as Shadow Minister for four years in opposition. And I can honestly say that during that time, I think he's developed a really valuable perspective of the complex policy issues facing an industry that's moved from being what was honestly a nice to have to become an acknowledged driver of employment and growth. So, to business. The film value chain remains in a very tricky state of flux. And the always precarious task of, for of forecasting revenues for titles coming to the market two or three years ahead has become, if anything, riskier than ever. The UK home video market, if I may still call it that, was worth 2.2 billion in 2013. That's slightly lower than in 2012. But the way in which people are watching films is changing radically. DVD sales continue to drop, but while a majority are still viewed on physical formats in 2013, downloading and streaming generated more than a quarter of the entire market, a combined share of 27% and rising. At least 40 digital services are now available, many of them embryonic, and between them, they're transforming the range and the quality of choice. And this can only be a good thing, although business forecasting should become a little more scientific once we really understand the prices people are willing to pay at various points of consumption. It's clear to any serious observer that the industry has come a long way and that the British public's relationship with the movies is and remains an enduring love affair. That appetite or that need for well-made films, in addition to other media, seems to be insatiable. But while the home entertainment sector is busy remodelling itself, UK cinema going is, I'm afraid, stubbornly flatlining. Half of our admissions come from a hardcore of frequent cinema goers, and the other half from occasional visitors, attracted just one or two times a year. Overall, almost exactly the same number of tickets was purchased in 2013, 165 million, as a decade earlier. And this, despite significant investment in new multiplexes and a vast increase in the number of films acquired and launched into distribution. Almost 700 features were released last year nearly double the total of a decade ago. So what's happening here? Well, it's easy to blame the cinema going plateau on piracy, on higher ticket prices, on ferocious competition, on the whirlwind churn of product, the weather, or is it too many phones ringing in the cinema or too much popcorn being crushed during the movie? Most likely, it's a combination of all of these. So rather than attempting to dissect them, let me offer a few broader thoughts through the prison of trends and developments in the media generally and their impact on our audiences. 30 years ago, in January 1984, Apple launched its Microsoft, Mac Macintosh computer. These little electronic devices put the creative power of data processing technology into people's hands and all of our lives were irrevocably changed. Today, the Apple Corporation is seven times the size of the whole UK broadcasting sector. 10 years ago, in February 2004, Facebook was founded. Twitter sprang, sprang, sprang up a couple of years later. WhatsApp and Instagram, both now owned by Facebook, weren't born until 2009 and 2010, respectively. Now fast forward to next year. 2015 will mark the centennial of organised film distribution in the UK. 
the pivotal business of connecting films and their audiences. I'd like to suggest that the FDA collates an image wall on a social network such as Instagram where people are invited to upload notes or photographs or movies recording their, their early cinema-going experiences, both past and indeed present. Who or what influenced your early choice of movies? Which posters or trailers were particularly inspirational? What was your favourite venue and why? The list can be endless.